Have you ever wanted to know what goes on behind the scenes at Disney World and other theme parks when a hurricane is on the way? Well, today we've got a Disney historian to help us understand how it is that these tourist attractions manage to weather the storm each and every single time. Hint, folks, it comes down to the fantastic people who work behind the scenes. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel where we endeavor as ever to keep you ahead of the culture curve, explain entertainment, and oh by the way, dive deep into just how exactly theme parks and tourism function. Today that is the junction we have as we go back in time to Hurricane Milton and find out what was Disney up to and what do they do every single time a really bad storm is on the way. How is it that the very next day things are cleaned up magically? folks? You've been waiting for a positive Disney video. Sometimes we have the blessing of getting to do one. We've got a lot of praise for Disney this time. Josh Harris joins us, Disney historian. And, by the way, he's weathered the storm with Disney, been part of those ride-out crews. Let's find out what he says. How do the preparations begin and end for hurricanes at Disney? But, uh, Jonas, we've been covering the, uh, the hurricane. And uh, one of the things we've been talking about is apparently a lot of evacuees decided that they were going to try to take shelter at Disney World. And yes, just as anticipated, uh, we do have our Disney historian here. Let's go ahead and welcome him in. Jonas, do you want to do me the honor? Sure. Uh, you, you, you might know him well from uh, his times appearing on the WDW uh, Pro Channel. He's also the curator and uh, chief content officer of Epcot Legacy, otherwise known as E82, and also JLH Omnimedia. Uh, I love it hearing this guy talk about Disney. Joshua Harris, welcome to the channel. Hello, everyone. Happy to have Hello. you, Josh. And Josh, are you, in a, uh, are you in a safe location? Are you feeling uh, pretty good about the, uh, the the weather at the moment? I really hate jinxing this, but I'm in like probably one of the safest locations in Central Florida. So, <laughs> All right, folks, uh, you heard it here first. He's in the very middle of Spaceship Earth. We've got your location. <laughs> we, won't tell the, we won't tell the security guards. They're He's in the well, chamber where my head is from. most of the time I'm not there. Well, uh, Josh, uh, you as a Disney historian, could you give us uh, your thoughts on the number of times that Disney has come this close to uh, the eye of a hurricane? Is this the closest? And uh, what do you anticipate will be the uh, the results of this? Do you think Disney will fare well with all? Uh, yeah, they'll be fine. Uh, this is this is only a Category 3 coming through. Uh, keep in mind that anybody who is uh, living on the coast that is severely impacted and everything, I am not referring to them. Uh, my uh, thoughts and prayers, of course, are uh, with them, and it's extraordinarily severe and, and somewhat deadly, deadly for them. That being said, uh, Central Florida is Central Florida. It's in the center of the state, and most of the time... Um, most of the winds that come through any of the hurricane damage and everything, they've had a lot of land to eat through before, uh, so that the winds actually weaken before they actually get here. So that's one of the dynamics of reason why it is kind of like one of the safest places in central Florida for that. So, uh, so there's that that's going on. Uh, I wanted to touch base on something. I uh, was uh, catching this a little bit earlier about why yes, they decided it, to it, keep is that what you uh, reached out about earlier. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so what you want to do is you need to um, you need to distribute the workload as much as possible inside the inside the parks. Keep this in mind. Also, I'm sorry, I have to disclaim this beforehand. I was with the company for uh, for uh, 20 years, and I went through like uh, I think about like eight or nine of the 11 hurricanes that have been through uh, uh, Walt Disney World. Um, and if you are there, that you do have, you already talked about the people that are staying in the resorts. Those are the ones that they are primarily catering towards at this moment. It's all going to be about the Walt Disney World resorts guests, not the theme park guests, but the resorts guests. And if you were to close down the park for the entire day, that's going to dramatically increase the workload that they have for the resorts, which they cannot really accommodate for that, that amount of time, nor do they want to. So you need to have something for the guests to be occupied with their time so that they don't end up with a huge scenario where they have the resorts that are inundated the entire time because it's extraordinarily chaotic. They do try to do as much as they can, 
um, during uh, during a hurricane, but it's not pleasant when you're inside of the resort. So they it's so them keeping the parks open. This is just one reason uh, why they they would want to do that. But yeah, that's um, that that's the primary reason why they want to actually take care of uh, take care of people is just to entertain them, also get them to get their money's worth as well. And they also have uh, the guests that are here. Um, we do have our own power grid, <laughs> uh, and uh, the 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 thing about that is is that it's all uh, the, the reason why it's so robust is not just because it's Disney, uh, but also that it's almost entirely underground, which increases the stability of it overall. Uh, so people actually do want to come to Disney resorts um, uh, from the coast, from everywhere else, to actually uh, to actually avoid some of the severe impacts of that, especially people with like medical equipment that need to have power running all the time. Uh, and uh, Disney is very stable for that. So when, when you say we, we've obviously, we've tried to cover the electrical situation within the former Reedy Creek here and now Sif Todd, uh, mm -hmm. I believe that Reedy Creek Energy Services, um, whatever the official name of that is, um, that that was still a part of Disney for longer than the rest of Reedy Creek. Um, I, I know that they they had brought in solar at some point, and it seems like they're getting more power from Duke uh, than they were in the past. Do you know if they fired up any generators? Uh, have you heard anything about that? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that one. I will say, though, that um, uh, they were integrated with, it was at the time Power City, and then it became Duke Energy. Uh, mm -hmm. That happened uh, probably about like, uh, please don't hold me to this, but somewhere around like 10 years ago uh, to where they weren't an independent um, power. They, they, they do produce their power, but it was not an in in independent company since like over 10 years ago. So it was fully integrated with everything. I'm not saying it's part of Duke Energy, but nevertheless, they're, 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 they're part of a, they're part of a uh, entire grid. They're not isolated by themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I, and I've, I've never been at the parks when the, the power goes out in any significant way, which is, you know, that's probably a, a good statement about how they handle things on, on property. Uh, here, I'm going to reach out to our contacts to see if Disney's fired up any of those generators that were uh, supposedly uh, either shut down or repurposed. Uh, repurposed sounds like they've been uh, th not repurposed as and turned into something else. But I'm going to see if uh, one of my contacts can confirm what the power situation is there at the parks. Um, and, bro, uh, what uh, feed are we watching right so now? So this is this is uh, Sarasota, Florida, uh, as the eye wall had passed by and they had a, a brief uh, time of, uh, what would you say, um, tranquility. So this is a little bit of tranquility in the midst of when the hurricane switches back on to being, being a ferocious meteorological event. But you can sort of see what it looks like there in one of the parks in uh, Sarasota. We've also been showing you a flooded parking garage that is on the west coast of Florida, not part of Disney. Uh, but uh, things have been... Uh, Rather strange. Here's another look at uh, what it looks like when you're in a hurricane and the, the uh, eye of the hurricane passes over. Uh, it says, this is out of, uh, from at Ashrafi Sunam. It says, in the eye of Hurricane Milton in downtown Sarasota, a deeply calm, meditative eye, absolutely spectacular. Well, that's one way to think about it. But uh, so very interesting things we're seeing. And again, this is what Sarasota looks like uh, right now, as best as we know. And uh, this will be making its way towards Orlando. It will be down uh, around a Category 2, Category 1. We hope Category 1 as it gets close to Orlando. And it, we anticipate, by the way, that it will pass just south of Orlando. And so that's good. Uh, in, in a couple of ways, there have been a lot of positives in terms of what could have happened. Uh, there was a prediction that this thing could be a worst-case scenario, go straight, straight through the Tampa Bay area, and then all the way through Orlando, and that's plenty of population to hit. Now we anticipate that it's going to stay just south of that and make a line out of there. Also, by the way, perhaps not as uh, much storm surge going up into Daytona, which would be a very positive thing. Daytona having taken a major hit from storm surge in a prior hurricane a couple of years ago and not yet ready for a, another one. So uh, that's what we're looking at, folks, right now. And we'll, we'll give you what we are seeing on the radar. As you can see, uh, Hurricane Milton is now fully land-based in terms of the eye and uh, made its landfall with Sarasota 
We'll be uh, reaching uh, about the area of Disney, perhaps at three in the morning, Disney and Universal. And of course, we're so happy as well that we have been getting this uh, tremendous feed out of, uh, out of, uh, and uh, apologies, folks. We'll get that up on the screen right now. Where's it at? Out of Park Pass TV. That's been doing a great job. And if you out there may wonder, yes, Spaceship Earth, in fact, did do all of its uh, programming for the nighttime show, even though there was no fireworks and even though we don't anticipate there are very many, very many people at Epcot. It just kept running in some sort of crazy dystopian and yet uh, mystifying way. So well, there you go. it is. I, 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 it's not dystopian. It's That's kind of cool. Well, it makes you wonder if all humans on Earth suddenly disappeared. How long? Would Epcot keep running? Well, keep in mind that you actually, you do not want to instill panic. You don't want to uh, alarm people. So they do things like the lighting programs, like the uh, background music. You want to keep those going just to have a, uh, have a calm state with, with everyone. Uh, if you were at the resorts right now, all of their BGM or background music would be playing at this moment. Uh, they don't, uh, well, yeah, they'll be playing until like 10 o'clock is when they typically shut them off. And that's just because, you know, people are trying to sleep. Um, so that, that it, it's to keep up appearances. It's also to keep, it, it keep people calm uh, because they want to have some sort of stability with what's going on. Now, Josh, in my studio, I don't currently have this screen where I can see close enough, but it looks like Spaceship Earth is going through another uh, packaged lighting show. Can anybody tell which one that is right now based on the designs that it's doing? It appears to be is Agatha. No, 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 please, no. That's what Lauren is experiencing right now. Is that the uh, is that the after show package that's playing right now? Hmm. I, I, can't, I can't tell. Yeah, hard to say, uh, hard to say. and I actually, uh, I, mean, I don't, want, uh, I, don't uh, I don't have official information about what they're actually doing right now with it, but I it is just the uh, standard shows. I believe. Uh, being, four shows that they do throughout the evening and then they have some color patterns that go on uh interspersed between those so it's probably just left on left to go with that i mean they're not going to shut that down uh just because you know and i think that uh, another person did talk about that uh, about the uh, yeah i think it was lauren that said um about the programming that needs to get uh, that, that it takes too long to shut it down than, than it is to uh, just leave it going they call those they the also, beacons of light. Yeah, they, they run a bunch of yes. um, they run a bunch of musical shows <laughs> on Spaceship Earth throughout the night. Like during uh, Festival of the Arts, it would be Rainbow Connection. During uh, Flower and Garden, they were playing this the song from Encanto with the "What else can I do?" I'm not sure which songs they're playing for this one, but I know that they are probably still doing that. So yeah, that's probably what we're seeing. And uh, I, I'm I'm sorry to be self-aggrandizing, but those lights are directly inspired by my work in 2016. Uh, so cool. So those Fantastic. are actually uh, so when I say that, the, uh, so I can say that they're my lights. Uh, so, <laughs> and that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. We are done for now, but don't worry. Do not fret. Not yet. For more content is still coming your way four times a day, right here on the Pro Channel. What a joy it has been to share our time with you. We hope you feel the same. Adding value to your every single day is our job here, and we take it very seriously. Folks, the only thing we ask in return is that you consider clicking that like button. Share, subscribe, click it. Stick it to those algorithms. It's the notification bell. And drop a comment right on down below. And folks, if you'd like to subscribe to our partner YouTube channels, that park place, that pod place, that game place, and some of those radio stations like Vacation Radio, well, we certainly would appreciate it. Until the next time we have the honor of spending time and being invited into your day, Folks, we go on our way saying this, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun.